Live show, live show, live show, live show. If you want tickets to the live show on Sunday, November the 5th. Sunday, November the 5th. Sunday, November the 5th. In the Thirsty Bear pub in Waterloo, Central London. Head over to Eventbrite where you can buy tickets. We start at 2 p.m. is when the first game is. We'll probably we'll, we'll all be there earlier than that. Live screen the Forest v Villa, Luton v Liverpool, and then this podcast. But the Game Week 11 review with Suj rather than you. And it goes all the way through till sort of they kick us out. When they kick us out. Exactly yeah. that. Tickets are five pounds. Uh, all money raised goes to the Game Week 39 charity fundraiser. Our live show is brought to you in partnership with our friends at FPL Meets. Help a brother out. They organise a lot of uh, awesome free meetups all around the world. Um, and so, yeah, please do come and show support and uh, come and say hi at the live show on the 5th of November as well. Sunday, November the 5th. It'll be a really, really good day out. Guarantee that. Uh, any fireworks that day, James? Uh, I mean, it might be um, for Watkins and Salah owners as Villa go to Forest and Liverpool go to Luton. So it'll be very interesting games from a fancy perspective as well, whatever format you play. Nice one, listeners. Uh, remember, remember the 5th of November. Stay safe. Ciao for now. Live show, live show, live yeah, show. That's live coming, show. that's coming. Live After two hours of setting the mics up, cables, cameras, I have to sit like a fucking <laughs> hunchback. <laughs> so... Listen, thanks everybody for turning up to our first ever Planet FPL Live. <laughs> We're going to do that for an hour. Hello everybody, welcome to another Planet FPL Clash of the Correspondents. My name's James and ahead of Game Week 11, this isn't going to be confusing because I've got Dan and Dan with me ahead of Sunday's big Super Sunday meeting at Kenilworth Road. Let me introduce you to Dan Ashby, our Luton Correspondent. How are you, Dan? Yeah, not bad. Uh, very strange being the main game on a Sunday. I thought they might have put it on at 2 o'clock, but they've given us the 4.30 game. Uh, it's quite possible, Dan, that Newcastle Arsenal was possibly the number one pick this week and because it couldn't yeah. be on the Sunday. <laughs> You've got the 4.30. It could be. And our Liverpool correspondent, Dan Lord's here. Now he's Dan. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, James. Good stuff. Right, let's get the ground rules out of the way here, guys. So uh, who's, who's, who's doing what? I think we've decided... Dan, as in Liverpool, Dan, is going to go under Twitter handle of Loco Lord, and Dan, you, as Luton, you're going to go Ashby, are you? Otherwise, was, this will just get too confusing. Yeah, let's do that. All right, Mister Ashby, then tell us how are we feeling about Luton. We last spoke to you ahead of the double game week, which started very well with a victory at Everton. There's also been a point at Nottingham Forest since as well. How are you feeling about the Hatters at the moment? Um. I think I mentioned when I last came on, we should have had more points than we do. And I probably still feel like, I think we probably could have had three or four more points, but for a number of reasons, we don't. And now we're in this tricky run where it's it's every point is going to be, well, it's going to be hard to get any points. So, um, yeah, it was nice to obviously be Everton away, first away win. Um, and then... Um, frustrating against Burnley. It should have been a draw, and they scored a worldy, which I don't think he'll he'll score again in his career, probably. Um, and then against you guys, we we came up with a random four four two out of nowhere, got outplayed, and then probably didn't deserve anything. But frustrating the way we conceded the goal in the end after that, a Bayo miss, and then uh, Forest. To be two down away at Forest and pull that back, that was, that's a great point. And Villa, well, it's Villa, I think. I was quite happy to get out of there with just a minus two goal difference because we didn't play great, to be honest. But, but that's interesting, isn't it? I think like, since the Chelsea game in game week three, is that the first time you've lost by more than one? Yeah, it is, yeah. At Villa, so like you're in games all the time. And yeah, you know, the, the Tottenham game kind of feels like a kind of on the the borderline of where you might be in the sense of in the first 10 minutes, my team could have got a hat full, but then yeah, the way yeah. the game unfolded with the Basuma red card, you mentioned the Adebayo miss. Then we scored with basically our only shot in the second half. Oh, it's ter- yeah. It was and, a terrible. And walk away with a one nil. And you probably, you probably come out of that really disappointing, probably five, 10 minutes in thinking, Oh my God, what have I put myself into yeah. here? But you've been in all these games and Forest, you look beat, right? That's a great result in yeah. the end. Now, you yeah, need, it was, yeah. Now, now, now you need some proper home points, though. Is it just Wolves at home is the only home points yeah, so far, isn't it? Yeah, which I, is obviously not good enough, really, you know, 
to well, stay that, up. I, I think that will surprise people because I think the one thing we thought going into pre-season was get a team like Liverpool down your manor, make it horrible and awkward, but it's not really panned out that way yet. No, it, we played West Ham the first game. I think I mentioned... It was quite a tight game and they scored at key times. He made a couple of mistakes and then maybe could have got a point right at the end, but probably didn't really deserve it. And then um, Wolves, Wolves at home is probably the best we've played. And I've watched Wolves numerous times and they've done nothing against us. That that was by far our best performance. Uh, that is, that was definitely two points dropped. Um, Burnley, it was just a really even game. They were better first half. We were better second. And like I said, they basically scored a wonder goal to beat us when it looked like it was going to draw or we were on top. Um, and, and then like against you guys, it's just, just a really weird game where you're right. I did feel at the end of the game a bit disappointed, but even though we, we should, like you mentioned, we should have been three at two or three down in 10 minutes, but I think it was the fact we missed that glorious chance and your goal, like, it was a short corner from that should never happen. I'd be, I was, that shouldn't happen Sunday leak. I'd be annoyed if that happened uh, if when I was playing back in the day. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating, but yeah, it's not really worked out how we, it has, but away from home, we've, done better than a lot of people would probably have expected when you look at playing Liverpool next obviously huge game for the football club do you think we learn anything from the Tottenham game or have you learned anything as a club from the Tottenham game because I guess that's the closest comparison we've got to yeah. what we might have on Sunday it's really hard because um, we obviously went into the season expecting to play 3-5-2 Five, three, two, and it's since the Fulham game, Edwards has come out and said we're changing due to opponent. And then we threw in, uh, we were playing five for one, which I think is probably our best formation. Um, but then we randomly against you played four, four, two, and I was like, we're not good enough to play four at the back. <laughs> it was like, a bit suicidal. It was brave. That's one of the things I yeah. said about it. I it was brave. Like you went for a high man to man system with us. Just yeah, the, the movement was a was a bit too much for you, really. Yeah. And, and and at times we during games, we you can tell we want to press and we do press at times. And then any team just are so good on the counter, we can get caught out at, at times. Um yeah, um it it's not helped with um going forward we've been all right like if you look at our data I think we've, we've created more big chances than Arsenal and they've had loads of penalties and things like that it's defensively we've probably conceded where we should have but um like we've played five at the back um eight times this season out of ten we've had, we've had six different back three partnerships yeah we'll get through that through time. injuries which which obviously because we're not one of the big clubs it it doesn't get doesn't get mentioned and when when we've had uh we've had Burke Lockyer and Bell three times we've got four points out of it so thank we're gonna play on getting... Sunday mate so it's, it's, no, it's no help for you in, in this instance. Dan, yeah. uh, local Lord, have you managed to catch a lot of loot in this season or not? Uh, I've seen the odd game. I saw the opener. Would you say it was West Ham? That was the first match, wasn't it? Um, uh, it was on the Friday night. Tottenham game. I saw the Tottenham game. Um, just bits, really. So, yeah, not not like, not a great deal. Couple couple of matches, I would say. They're competitive, though, aren't they? <clears throat> that's that's yeah. become quite clear already, I think. Like, you almost feel like... Um, Dan Ashby, you almost feel like you separate yourself from Sheffield United a little bit in people's minds, I think. The people looking at, well, they are competitive in these games. And the Sheffield United yeah. have been a few as well. But it, it just feels, I think, primarily because the set piece for it, it feels like it's more about you in terms of if you can defend properly, you've got a chance in games, even games like like Sunday. Uh, local, do you have any fear going into this one? Not fear, but... A, a, a consciousness of, say, their physical threat, if you will. Um, <clears throat> I think one of the good things Liverpool are are um, d defensively solid, generally, in set pieces. 
which Luton are good at. So we hopefully nullify that. We are a lot more physical now. We've got some big, big, big units in there and, and Luton are very physical from what I've seen. They, they do put it about a bit and uh, bully teams a little bit. So from that point of view, no, but um, I, I always worry about playing teams like this because it's it's almost a free hit for these teams. The, the crowd's going to be well up for it. And, you know, when, when was the last time Luton played, you know, Liverpool in... In the, in the top flight in in English football, so they'll be well up for it. But um, I, I struggle to to see a scenario where where Luton get anything out of it. If I'm honest, hold on, hold on, Mister Ashby, you're eighteenth. That's that's good news because you've got this weird record, haven't you, Mister Loco Lord of Jurgen Klopp teams dropping points against teams that are actually in. The relegation zone isn't the stat that you've dropped more points against teams in the relegation zone than in the top four since Klopp took over. I think that's the weird statistic, isn't it? It, it was about about yeah last season. I don't know whether that's still the case, but yeah, it, we always, I say always, we historically we we struggled against teams who low block. I think the creativity and the and the makeup of the team now probably suits us a little bit better with that. Yeah, no, that that would be fair. I've, I feel like the way you've reshaped the midfield, there's more avenues back to hurt in the opposition, where at, at times last year, yeah, you'd face that and it looked a bit flat, I think. I think like uh, having potential of, of players who can who can hit one from outside the box as well, people like Subasli and uh, even McAllister, if he gets that far forward, whereas, you know, you, you'd never imagine Henderson... Or what Fabinho did a few times, to be fair, but you know, cracking one in from twenty-five yards or whatever. Whereas we've we've got that little bit extra this time. What have you made of your recent performance? We last spoke to you obviously before the West Ham game. Ten points from the five since, which was a difficult run. In fairness, I think is a decent return for you, Dan, isn't it? Which obviously had the, the awkwardness of what happened against my team in game week seven. Yeah, I was disappointed with the Tottenham result. Uh, I thought we deserved something out of that. You did, mate. Given all the circumstances were, which happened on the pitch and, and around the pitch. Um, Brighton, I was a bit disappointed as well. We were a bit flat in that game. But, you know, if you'd have said, you know, you dropped points away at Brighton, I'd, I wouldn't be too disappointed with that. And, and even Tottenham, you know, you, you, you're flying at the moment. So, you know, a 2-1 defeat's not the end of the world. We're still up there and, and, and kind of in and around it, really. So, yeah, we, we've looked good. In some games, we've looked really good. Um, but only for periods of time, like a 20 minutes here, and then we drop off for a little bit and then another 20 minutes. But definitely heading in the da- right direction, I would say. You're in a title race here, aren't you? Uh, we'll be in it there or thereabouts. I, I, you know, I never change my opinion. I think City are, are way, way ahead of everybody else. I don't, you know, it, it would take a massive drop off from City to for anybody to catch them. I think. Dan Ashby, how, how do you see that at the top? See Liverpool challenging City and others. I mean, yeah, Arsenal. Obviously, um, I'm not referring to Tottenham, of course. I think it's. Um, you'd, you'd probably edge City to win it eventually, but I think it's it's going to be closer and more teams involved. I don't I don't know the the points now. I don't I don't need to look that far up, but um, I know it, it's pretty close. But um, from what I've seen of, of Liverpool on the TV, they seem a lot more balanced this year than they were last year, and that's down to the signings in in midfield. Well, bar a really weird goal that should have stood that didn't stand, or Joel Matic's wild swing of a boot, which was particularly unfortunate because he played very well that day. It'd be four teams locked on the same amount of points at the top of the table now, Dan, if that yeah. was the case. So, like, it, it's, it's really tight, isn't it? And I think your start was probably more difficult than the other three teams there. And and that's why we always felt if if you got beyond this kind of say the Tottenham Brighton games, and I know it's only one point from those two, but if you got beyond them and was within it, it was like, yeah, you're in with a good chance. And it's it's not like Arsenal and City have been dropping loads of points. Like they haven't. You've stayed very much there. Was it seven wins, two draws and and a victory, isn't it? It's, it's good going, mate. Yeah, yeah. Lost lost to Tottenham, drew Brighton, Chelsea, all, all away matches, won all the home matches. Um so yeah, we said it's the start of the season, didn't we? When we when we chatted that um, we had a difficult start, and if we were in and around come this period, then it's happy, happy days, really. So yeah, 
it's uh, all rosy at the moment, I suppose, apart from Robertson's injury. But I'll, I'll take just that. Um, I think we just looked a lot better this year, happier. Other than Robertson, was the team that played against Forest and obviously Luis Diaz exceptional circumstances, who we know Jago Jota said was obviously intended to start, would that be your strongest team now? Um, or is, or is, is Curtis Jones back a part of that now? Because obviously back for yeah, suspension. Yeah, I'd, I'd argue that, that Jones may come in for Gravenberg. Um he's, he's still very raw, isn't he? And, you know, he put in a great performance against Toulouse, but I think he was average at best uh, at the weekend. Um, I thought McAllister had his best game uh, for Liverpool uh, at the weekend. I thought he was decent. But yeah, that I'd say that's the strongest strongest 11, yeah. Sebasta is a monster, isn't he? I love him. He's yeah, great. Yeah, he's really good. Can for, for anyone who hasn't seen him, can you just explain what, what he is and what he's changed so much for you? Just well, he's got his, his physical presence for a start, technical ability, either foot, either side, doesn't doesn't matter. His energy and his speed, the way he eats up the ground, and he's, you know, in 85th minute, he's running like he was in the fifth minute. And he's, he's, just, he's just very, very good. I, can't, I, I don't see any weaknesses in his game at the moment, from what I can see. It looks, it, that 60 million is looking like still, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I, I saw some kind of weird tweet or something, and, and someone had put, I feel really bad. We should, we should call Leipzig and give him some more money. Kind of thing. He's, he's, he's been that good. What was that for Navi Kato or? Uh, Salzburg, sorry. I always get the wrong one. We should give him more money. Um, Didn't they both come from Leipzig? Oh, I missed that. Where did Sebastian come from? Did he not come from Red Bull Leipzig? Yeah, he came from Leipzig. Yeah. Isn't that where Navi Kato came from as well? Um, yes. So you win some and you lose some. Well, I mean, that's Kato still, was that, unlucky. That, that's still a mystery, is that? Because, you know, it all went on kind of uh, performance data and stuff like that. And he was like off the charts, was navigated. It's exactly what they wanted. And he just he just never stayed fit. And you could see you could see in some games, in some periods, yeah, this is the, this is the case that they were telling us we were going to get. But, um, yeah, it, it never happened. So, yeah, Shabbat is unreal. I've, I've run out of superlatives for him, really. Dan Ashby, you mentioned these defensive issues. Maz Anderson, Reesberg, and Mari Bell all injured. Am I right in saying they're all hamstring injuries as well? I think they are, yeah. Yeah. Is, 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 is there something wrong there from the club's perspective? Maybe. But Burke's always been pretty injury prone anyway. Um, Bell's obviously the shocker. He, I think the last two seasons he's played 40 odd games. So um yeah, Bell. And obviously he's our natural left sided centre back. We don't really have another one. Uh so we've had Mengi, um, who was probably brought brought in more as a development back player having to be thrown in. Uh we've obviously got Osho back at the weekend, who's he's good on the ball and can pass through the line. So I'm happy to get him back, but we sort of have having to throw him in, which is not ideal, really. Well, you just ended up really short numbers there, haven't you? I yeah, presume we'll, we'll, we'll... it was basically five for one at Villa. I presume against Liverpool, it'll, it'll be that again, won't it? I have no idea. We played four four two against you. Um, I'd have thought so. What What was the the reflection on that though with the Tottenham game? Was the feeling amongst the fan base that the back four worked? No, it didn't. It didn't work though. No, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. We looked. We looked a lot better. I know you were down to ten men, but when we had Doughty, we went back to the five, and we had Ogbené and Doughty as we. You really struggled. I, I yeah. know you were down to ten men, but, but you, you had really a spare struggled. on the wide areas the whole second half. Yeah, and and I actually felt we changed. I think Edwards done his subs way too early in that game. There was no need to do them. And as the game progressed, we were bringing on players who probably aren't Premier League quality and it game sort of fizzled out. Um, but yeah, I th- I'll be shocked if it's not five at the back, to be honest. 
yeah, is that what you'd expect, Dan? I mean, you uh, probably the thought of if I was a Liverpool fan, you said, all right, Luton going to play a back four, I'd be thinking, oh my god. To be honest, yeah, I think like uh, like the other Dan alluded to earlier that that five five four one is kind of their strongest formation, and, and the majority of games they've played that at Tottenham for some reason, obviously the red card probably changed that slightly. Um, personnel pending, I think that that is their strongest lineup because the, you know they they know the more bodies they have back there, the the easier and against they'll be very brave to go with four against three. Um, at the weekend, I would say you'd need that extra cover um, and just try and hit us on the break and, and or, or a set piece or something. I think that'll be the game plan. So if it's back three, Dan, is, is it three that you said, Mengi, play? is it left-sided he'll play? With Osho right-sided? No, no, no. I think we'll Osho played left-sided. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Bell is close, though, apparently. Okay. So if, if Bell's fit, Bell has to play. Take it but as, yeah, it'll uh, be it. There's no interest in Ted and Maggie as a 3.9 FPL asset. No, I don't think so. it's a definite man of match, isn't he? I've been impressed with Alti, Alfie Darty, mate. I'm, I, we, we had a bit of banter online about England left backs, didn't we? And I was like, oh, I don't yeah, think yeah. so. And then he did play left back against us. One hell of a delivery on him, isn't he? Yeah, um, he, yeah he has um, set pieces. I think he's, he's creating a lot from those set pieces, although. The last he he was taken off them for Barkley and Townsend, which the fans aren't ov- overly happy with. But um, yeah, um, yeah, it's great delivery, and he, he has a good link up with uh, Ogbené, who's who's rapid and probably been our those two have been our best players this season. I take it Colton Morris is not in that FPL team anymore. No, no, no. I I, I got his um. I got his captaincy points in the double and then moved him on for for Nunez, actually, oh, in the man. wild card. Oh, nice. It, it's bullshit that you didn't triple captain him, no, mate. <laughs> it's a 10 point, oh, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. And you could captaincy, been... mate. Yeah, but yeah, I thought I was pushing my luck just putting him on as a captain, to be honest. Darwin Nunes, Mr. Loco Lord, is the player not in my FPL. I've, I think it's bothering me that he's not in it more than Salah, I think. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I've loaded him. I've I've gone on so much. He's been that close to joining my team so many times and he's not. I've just not brought him in. And it, it's more of a, I think it's just more a fear of, of Haaland. If, if I don't have Haaland and he goes mad, it's going to really hurt my rank. And if I don't have Nunes, you know, he's just not that well owned. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just a fear of missing out, really. It's a bit of FOMO with Haaland. Uh, but he's just he's just a nuisance. He's a, he's a pain. He's a nuisance. I was chatting about this with, with Clayton just generally last week. It's almost like, give me an injury and just force me to to make the... I can't take Alvarez, Watkins or Haaland out this week with City playing Bournemouth and Villa playing Forest. I, I don't think I can really justify it. Could I, could I go Watkins to Nunes this week? I, I, I've only just brought Watkins in because I was just, uh, he's another one who's really highly owned. And, he's so, uh, he's Watkins, the is, game, really. Watkins is so consistent. You know, at least with him, you know, he's going to start every week as well. Yeah. And yeah, obviously not the case with, with Nunes and especially with Gapo back, back in the mix now. And, you know, hopefully Diaz will be back with us soon and that'll. You know, it just gives us more options, really, and it's less likely he's going to start. Have you got Salah at the moment? Yeah, I've had Salah for a, a, quite a while now. Yeah, so I'll I'll take it you on Salah and Holland. Yeah. So you're the best person to ask. Who's getting the armband this week then? Uh, I don't think it's on either of them at the moment. Oh it's no, you're moment. you're lying, Loco Lord. That's just because you haven't changed it yet. No, no, I had a, I had a look earlier, and I was thinking because I'd already done my bus team, and I, I'll tell you now. It was Mate, please do. I can't wait because they're the only two choices this week, and they Nunes must be the third. Oh, sorry, yeah, it is on Holland. Yeah, do you go in Holland, uh, Mister yeah. Ashby? Where do you, where do you sit on captaincy for FPL this week? Uh, Holland. Is that because you don't own Salah, or no, I own Salah. I, got I even captain I, I captain Watkins against Leon. I right, so it's not a, yeah, I get that. It's not a kind of a 
I wouldn't go shouting about that, by the way, mate. Um, it's not a against Luton kind of thing. I get what you're saying. Yeah, listen, with Holland with the home game, it's difficult to to overlook. Um, but what would you say, um, Mr. Ashby, to people not on Holland? Because now after the Manchester derby, that the fears come back again for many people, isn't it? Oh, I just minus eight him out. Should I take minus eight to get him back? Captain Salah this week against your team is reasonable, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I, to be honest, I've I've had um, Salah for quite a while since I done wild card eight, I think. Um, and I've, I it was a non negotiable. I was having them both. Uh, I had Son as well, but I took him out for Saka this week at Madison. I've got I've got no options on my bench. They're all like budget. I got McAtee, um, Taylor, and Kabore. I've up. You know, Kabore has gone now. He's gone. Yeah, he's gone for Simicas. I had a little bit of budget, but yeah, it's it's Fred Bear. Forget it. I mean. So you're no Luton now and you're with what? Is it just Salah and Shimikas or is there a third Liverpool for you? Nunes. You've got him as well, haven't you? Bloody hell. <laughs> for the benefit of the audio listeners, Dan Local or just not his head, bastard. <laughs> I was just looking at my team then, thinking, how the fuck can I squeeze him in? <laughs> so what Liverpool have you got, Dan? Uh, I've got Shimikas and Salah. Did you get Shimikas straight away? Or did you uh, wait for the Everton game to go? Uh, no, I got him for for the Everton game, which was quite lucky. Even though we did end up with a clean sheet, he came off, didn't he? And I was like, oh, that's banked at least. Did, did, did you think, no, when you'd heard Robertson, you know, unfortunately looking at sort of like eight to ten weeks, did you just think, no brainer, just get him in? Yeah, and people were talking take. about Dormas playing on the left and stuff. It d- didn't even cross my mind. I thought he's, he waited patiently. All the time in the wings for his chance. He's got his chance. I don't think he's 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 gonna kind of put someone else in there. He trusted him enough to keep him around. Yeah, I just felt if Klopp didn't pick him, it would be such a kick in the teeth to him, wouldn't it? Yeah, the fact absolutely. that he is patient, doesn't seem like a player who kicks up a fuss or anything. Seems like a good member of the group. Yeah, it just seemed liked. inevitable to me to, that he would get his chance. Yeah, I think um, yeah. I'd have been shocked if he'd have put Gomez over there. That's not a vote of confidence at all, is it? It's just like, well, you know, I'll go in January then if that's how you feel about it. No, I mean, I could understand, say, when you go to City in 13, that he might think, oh, I, w- I want to do something different now. You know, I might want to play like a Gomez to play against Phil Foden, for example. But otherwise, in these, because he's great fixtures either side, isn't it? Luton, Brentford, then the City game, Fulham at home, Sheffield United away, Palace away, Manchester United at home, Feels like it should it needs to be included at the moment. Then you play Arsenal in the blank game week in game week eighteen. It is a super run of fixtures, Dan. Even with that City game in there, yeah, it is, and that, that's why I brought him in because we are looking a bit more solid as well now. Um, I thought Verge was good again at the weekend. He's been, he's been almost back to his best, I think, just recently, uh, which helps. And, and Matic came in surprisingly, kept his place for a few weeks, but Canati's back there now, so the they're pretty solid at the back. Yeah, I felt the Robertson injury was the trigger for Canate to come back in the team at the same time as well. Matip did pretty well. That was really good against us, for example. Yeah, he's got I a think. great goal against you, didn't he? Yeah, good, good, with some finish, mate. Yeah, I can tell you that for <laughs> certain. If if I said to you, Mr. Loco Lord, right, you've got a wild card now and you can only have one of Salah or Haaland, where would you go? Probably Salah. I, I just only because as I know Haaland got the brace at the weekend, but I think just Salah's been more consistent this year, a bit more reliable. Haaland's not been the Haaland of last year yet, but we, you know, if he, if he at the weekend if he went and scored five against Bournemouth, no one would be shot, would they? So no, but I wouldn't be surprised if Mo posted a hat here at Kenilworth Road either, mate. So I think I would. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Well, I, then that kind of defines captaincy for this week for those with both, if you're saying that. You're saying you'd be surprised if Salah got a hat trick. And yet I you're saying, well, if Holland got five, we wouldn't be surprised. Home. Yeah, they've been defensively all right. Whereas Bournemouth have been leaky. City at home usually get four or five, don't they, against the weaker side? So, it, I'd, yeah. I'd... If, if Liverpool were at home at Luton, then it's a different story. But away, I'd, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Fair. On Nunes, we, we kind of laughed about it a bit, but how, 
do you think he'll lock this down now from a minutes perspective? No, I don't think so. Even even if it had had an hat trick at the weekend, I think it, there's a lot of rotation going to happen there. Um, you know, Gakpo will come in for some games, and it'll be it'll kind of almost be a bit opponent specific. I think <clears throat> uh, how we want to get at people and how people are going to kind of uh, set up against us. So I think with with Luton, it wouldn't surprise me if Gakpo came in. I just think as well, because they're a physical presence, that it, it leans into Nunes more again, I think, this weekend. Plus, I think why he's scoring, keep playing him, keep playing him. That's my take. It feels like we obviously had that spell last year. We played on the left a lot. It feels like that's stopped now. But he should play through the middle, shouldn't he? Uh, yeah, I said last season he, he's he's a threat. He's a, he's a threat on the shoulder as, as the centre forward. Um, he seems to find himself in the right position all the time. I mean, the goal goal at the weekend, he didn't really know much about it. He just ran to the front post and, and stuck his foot there. And, you know, I don't know if you saw the Toulouse one where he rounded the keeper and, and hit the post. And, yeah. you know, it's like, it's this jackal and hide of him. He's, uh... I, I love his reaction after Graben Birch scored. And he still sunk to his, and he was he looked gutted, didn't he? Couldn't believe, And admittedly, the game was won, so it didn't really matter. He's got Nunes, um, non penalty XG per 90 this year is better than Salah. That tells you what this player could be, doesn't it? Yeah, he's, like I said, he's always in and around it. And, you know, Liverpool are going to create chances and he, he, he gets two or three good chances every game when he's in there. Um, and it's just hit and miss, really, at the moment. If he was clinical, then, you know, he'd be, he'd be top goal scorer in the league, probably. It's just, um, it's going to take him a, a bit, but I, I I did say pre-season. I think it'll take him a bit, but come the end of the season, he'll be he'll be right up there. I think he'll get fifteen to twenty goals easily. Yeah, it's also we should timestamp this and and say it's Monday evening. Obviously, we don't know the situation for Paul Lewis. He has his family at the moment, and and what the situation is there in terms of his his availability or not is is not important at the moment. But it's it's also difficult to not acknowledge him. Um, and know that that's obviously going to have a bearing because he is part of Liverpool's best eleven, in my opinion. Would you agree with that, Dan? Yeah, I think uh, the strongest eleven would have him on the left. Yeah, yeah. Any love for Trent as an asset, or is this is this over? No one's uh, talking about him, are they? I, I know really, part I of the shimmy cast as much, well, isn't but... it? Too much. He's not. He's not posting the numbers to justify them scores at the moment. But... Fantastic player, and he will create chances and, and will get goals. But there's there's too much about it at a cheaper value, isn't there? Midfield or wherever you want to go to to kind of compete with that. Yeah, I don't. Would you agree with that as well, Dan Ashby? We couldn't make a case for Trent over Shimikas at this minute, could you? Not at the minute. It's just the the extra money, isn't it? That extra money is the difference of like son to Salah, isn't it? It's... I don't quite know how you'd do it at the moment, in all honesty. So, Mr. Ashby, are we, are we saying Morris up front against Liverpool then? On his own, I mean? Yeah, although Adebayo's looked look good the last few. I know he had that terrible miss against you, but he, he's come on against Forrest, um, was part of the subs with Barkley and Townsend to change the game. And he he done, he done all right. He, he caused the... Hilarious OG for um, Martinez at the weekend as well. So, did he? Well, but just by being there, yeah, yeah, That's a, it could cause havoc. But um, yeah, I, I think it's there might be a game though if if Morris like doesn't. I'm not sure if he's dropped off or whether we're we're paying harder teams. He's not had the same influence uh, the last few games. Where we might see like an Adebayo start soon, but yeah, I'd be surprised if they drop Morris. Yeah, your home games coming up. Just having a look ahead: Liverpool, Palace, Arsenal, Man City, Newcastle, Chelsea, Brighton. Yeah, bloody hell, mate! It's good to be getting points away for a moment. You got Palace in there. Um, they're not an easy one to beat, though, Dan. In fairness, yeah, but I can't see Palace scoring in, in, in a million years at the moment. But well, they scored against my team, mate. Did they? 
Yeah, what it was, was late. <laughs> What was the goal? I watched that match. I can't even remember the <laughs> Jordan goal. Jordan scored. I mean, it was handball, so it shouldn't have counted. Oh, obviously. yes, it was handball. How they didn't see... What a, what a force <laughs> that was. He rolled down his arm. Like... Dan, we, me and you, Liverpool and Tottenham fan, we really having a discussion about VAR and what they can and can't see right now, yeah? Oh, fucking useless. A lot of them. What was your reaction after that game, mate? The the Tottenham game? Yeah. I think it was just the, the whole... You know, and I, I know people make mistakes and stuff like that, but it was all like just brushed under the carpet. Oh, it's just a mistake. Oh, we can't, we can't bring the game back. We can't stop it. They've already started again. It was like, don't be fucking ridiculous. Who said you can't stop the game? I know the rules say that, but this is like, <laughs> but if, yeah, but the rules do say, it, unfortunately. But and I'm agreeing like, with you. Weird circumstances. This is, you know, that you've actually confused what the what the the, the kind of decision on the field was. And said, "Yeah, it's fine. It's as you said it was, but actually, it wasn't. What that that's not the same, is it? But um, I, 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 I was more disappointed, to be honest. And I've and I've heard your take on it. I was more disappointed with the red card for Jones because I thought that was, you know, if if they're going to start giving red cards for that, they're going to have to just stop people tackling these days because there was no malice in that whatsoever. I've seen." probably a dozen tackles worse since that, that have some of them not even got a yellow. And and I know what you said about it. It went over the top. And But, I mean, it, it's football, you know. I played football for years and sometimes that happens. And it, you, you're going to have to stop just people tackling if that's how it's going to be. So that disappointed me more than the, dis, than the disallowed goal, if I'm honest. I think we'll, we'll disagree on the red card because you know I think that, that it was. But... I obviously have a huge sympathy for you with with what happened with with the Diaz disagreement. You know what I spoke about it at length, mate. And it, I, I think the game was was compromised essentially. You can't give someone a goal and not let them have the goal. It's a it's a madness. Mister Ashby, you just want to come in and have the deciding vote on the Jones red card because the, we need neutral here, mate. It's a red card. Sorry. Thanks, mate. Cheers. <laughs> it annoys me because back when obviously when I was playing, he didn't mean it, that, but I card. think it is. Yeah, but yeah, it's. But I just the referee, it's just embarrassing now, isn't it? Like, I, I don't know what a decision, like a pen, a handball is. I've said last, I, I don't know what it is. Well, we, yeah, last time you was on, we spoke about handballs that have gone for you and against you, which we, yeah, all of them were like, what's going on? Yeah. So, um, I, I think what annoys me now is it's just no common sense when they make a decision. It, it was like the, the penalty to Newcastle. That's never ever a penalty. Like he, he's already going down and things like that. It's just I'd I think like it was one. I could, I could understand when it happened live. I don't know if you were watching the game live. When it happened, the reaction was all penalty. When yeah, you see it back I a few understand. times, yeah, which yeah. the referee on the pitch, in fairness, hasn't got the the benefit of, and we yeah, do. The, you're going, oh, I'd... it's not a pen. Because his it's contact, like... he didn't want to overturn it. it. Was silly, and yet it was one. Was it Arsenal Man United earlier in the season? But it was a bit of contact. I think an Arsenal player was yeah. running through. There was a bit of contact, but it was obviously it wasn't a pen. But they did overturn that one. It's the consistency. Yeah, but the, it's what annoys me is the thing where oh, it's got to be cl- this clear and obvious thing. Well, just just common sense. Like most times, fans can watch a, an incident and they were like, "No, that's not a penalty." Within like ten seconds. And, and that's what annoys me the both. Like, whether I support Luton or, or, or things like that, a, a, a lot of fans can can sit around and within 10 seconds can decide if it's a penalty or not. And that's what annoys me the most. Mm. It's, it's like you say, it's the clear and obvious. And if, if it's taking yes. them longer than 15 seconds, then it's not clear and obvious, is it? If you have to break yeah. it that much, then it's not clear and obvious. And it's just like whatever the decision was it, it stands uh, to be fair it took five and a half minutes to get the offside decision right at Bournemouth on Saturday so I didn't say make it out of what you will did you uh, and you know my opinion that I think Liverpool had every right to ask not saying they should have got but had every right to say and question the idea of a replay you're shouting your head was, was you a bit disappointed Ridic- that ridiculous idea no I know no, no. did like you that. but sorry wasn't good enough that was my key point so I think Liverpool had to speak loud enough even if they didn't believe it was you a bit disappointed that Klopp mentioned the word replay, though? Because it just it just brought a bit of attention that felt not necessary. Th- yeah, a little bit, but I think he did it on purpose to kind of say... 
Yeah, I agree. Enough's enough. You can't just keep saying sorry to people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I, I hope that's the reason he did it because you know you can't be you can't be asking for replays on decisions that have gone wrong. Otherwise, where do you stop? Because it, it happens in every single match. I know this was weird, but uh, no, I didn't want to replay. It's it is what it is, and and it's tough shit, isn't it? Unfortunately, yes. Um, Dan, is it three from four at the bottom of the table? Or, or do you see yeah. an Everton, a Forest, or a Chelsea mm-hmm. getting sucked into it? I don't know. It's hard now, isn't it? Um, there's a gap, and the teams at the bottom just aren't scoring enough points. Um, I've seen Everton. They, even when I saw them live, they looked looked better than what I've, some of the teams I've seen. Um, you'll put, you might get one team drop. But I wouldn't be maybe a Fulham. Um, like, even then, there's what are they five or six points ahead of us, probably. Hey, look, look, a difficult team to beat when Paulinho's fit. But I'm not. Yeah, it's like, yes, yeah, it might just be unless the points deduction happen, which even if they do, it probably won't happen this year because they'll appeal it and things like that. It's it probably is three from four, I'd say. Then that gives you a chance, doesn't it? Because everyone's writing one off, and you're not that one. Yeah. But Sheffield, the Sheffield United's next three game or oh, four games, they've got winnable games against. But they've got Bournemouth and Burnley in a row in thirteen and fourteen. Yeah, so if they get four points from that, it, narrative will soon change. But yeah, for us, we which any point is a good point for us at the minute. It's going to put pressure on um, the Palace and Brentford games after the international break. Um, if we don't have, get any points from Liverpool and United. I, I, I really liked Rob Edwards' interview after the defeat at Villa, though. There, there seemed like um, an acknowledgement, an acceptance, and I think you could see that in your way end afterwards at Villa Park as well, an understanding of who you are and where you're at, and it's yeah. okay. And if you stay up this year, amazing. But if you don't, as kind of discussed in pre-season, the club is setting itself to be in a position with new stadium, etc., where it will do better again in the future rather than fall back alarmingly like it obviously did 30 years ago and stuff. So do you get that feeling? Like you're proud of where you were at and there's no huge expectation on it. The pressure's external, it, if you will. Yeah, it's it's hard to, for any other fan to know what we're going through. We, we were nearly bust. I mean, yeah. our club didn't nearly exist. We, we spent five years in non-league when we thought we shouldn't have been down there. We've climbed up it within 10 years doing it correct way without a a billionaire or a multi-millionaire owner um we've spent 17 million this year which is laughable but it's we've we broke our record three or four times this this summer and yeah we're it's hard because we lost 3-1 to Villa well 10 years ago we lost 3-0 away to Gateshead in front of Probably what under two thousand people. It's it's it, it's hard, and so just some fans just can't comprehend that, and that's why at the end of every game they're getting clapped off because that they they're trying the best they can. That's and, it. If the effort's there, mate. Yeah, and, and the fans can see it. it's like especially the last couple of games, 2-0 down against Forest and bring that back. Even against Villa, yes, it was 3-0, but we showed five. That they've been hammering teams four, five, and six, but we were the one who, towards the end, were the, the team pushing. So, yeah, it's... Will we lose four, five, six? Maybe it could happen, but I'm encouraged to show that we are competing and hopefully it continues. I, I suspect of all them home games, somewhere in there, there probably will be one that's bad, really bad. But it might be one in there that was worth coming up just to have that one day. Yeah. And who, who knows? It might be Sunday. Go on then, Mr. Ashby. Give us a prediction. Oh, I think Liverpool win probably 3-0. Mr. Loco Lord. Um I don't I don't think it'll be three. I would say 
uh, if it is three, maybe three one two nil. I, I would say two, you know, would have been great two, if, you, if you just went like seven or seven seven one or something. <laughs> No, I can't. I can't see. I can't see that. I, nah, I, I think as well that kind of team. I don't think they'll crumble. They'll just, you know. I think there will be one at some point, Dan. It will just go against you, probably yeah. bad. But I've been saying consistent. There will be. I reckon of those all them home games I listed, you'll win one, and it's not Palace. I mean another one. You'll win one of them. Them big ones. Palace will somehow. probably the five or six niller. Yeah, it could be. Them. Yeah, was it? Well, let's hope let's hope you get absolutely hammered off us at the weekend, and then that that's out of the way then, and then yeah. you, you've got to win them. Yeah, ex- exactly that. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't see it being big, but I, I, to be honest, I agree with you. Ashby probably yeah, about three 0 or so. The the key is, I mean, if you reflect on the game, my team had with you. If we'd have scored in that period in the first five ten minutes, and the, the pattern continued, it could have. It, it could have turned out quite nasty, I think, for you. Yeah. As it turned out, you could have easily got something out of the game. So, but that what the one thing that was certainly there to be admired, I remember sitting there watching the game about half hour in, and I thought, ah, he's not still in it. But you kept going and actually you began to get a foothold in the game. You had a goal that was disallowed and stuff. If you defend well, you're going to give yourself a chance in any game. But I also agree with what Dan's point is. I, I think Liverpool have ironed out issues that they've had defensively as well. And I think the biggest thing for you, Loco Lord, is is the the amendment of the midfield is taking a massive pressure off those guys at the back, which is making their life easier and the confidence is coming back in the team because of it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think Sabosli particularly is absolutely instrumental in everything that's happening defensively and offensively at the moment. Mm. Good stuff, lads. Thank you both so much. Uh, Mr Ashby, anything you want to plug before you go? I know the answer is yes. Yeah, so uh, on Twitter at Dan Luke Ashby and like the previous podcast, I am part of the official Gaffer uh, podcast, uh, which is the Championship Fantasy Football. Absolutely crazy week in it with uh, Somerville getting f- four attacking returns in the first half. Um, but yeah, um, if you want to listen to, it's not just fantasy, it's about the Championship uh Championship at EFL up uh, at EFL Fantasy. I've got that wrong, but tell Jamie Roberts, your co-host. I still have my triple triple. Oh, do you? Oh, that's yes, I annoy do. a lot, a lot of people. Uh, I know it especially annoy Jamie. So do send him my love. Tell him I'll see him Sunday as well. Um, good luck with that, mate. Mister Loco Lord, anything to plug for yourself, mate? Uh, not for me, but you just alluded it to it there. The uh, Planet FPL live on Sunday, so if anyone can get there, please get there. It'll be a good, good event. Lads. I've yeah. uh, been to the last three, but I can't make this one. It's a it's a Sunday. Just come back from being abroad. I've no money left, so it's a uh, it's a no from me. Do you want me to pay for your train ticket? <laughs> no, it's all right. <laughs> I was Dan. checking the trains, and it's like. Uh, three hours and oh, like 100 odd quid and then I was checking the drive and then it was like four hours 20 minutes and I was like oh that's like an eight and a half hour journey round trip I was like no nah. okay see you Sunday mate love you both so much <laughs> <laughs> Dan Dan a pleasure next week's clash of the correspondence Luton may not have been written off yet but Sheffield United have been and Ben Tomo Thompson is on clash of the correspondence next week ahead of Sheffield United's trip to Brighton and Hove Albion in game week 12. Sam Murray obviously on for that one as well. So you'll be with me again for the Sky Fantasy Football Podcast tomorrow. Just see me say good luck to Dan and to Dan. Cue music, please, man child. Live show, live show, live show, live show. If you want tickets to the live show on Sunday, November the 5th. Sunday, November the 5th. Sunday, November the 5th. In the Thirsty Bear Pub in Waterloo, Central London. Head over to Eventbrite where you can buy tickets. We start at 2pm is when the first game is. We'll probably we'll, we'll all be there earlier than that. Live screen, the Forest v Villa, Luton v Liverpool. And then this podcast, but the Game Week 11 review with Suj rather than you. And it goes all the way through till sort of they kick us out. When they kick us out. Exactly yeah. that. Tickets are £5. Pounds. Uh, all money raised goes to the Game Week 39 charity fundraiser. Our live show is brought to you in partnership with our friends at FPL Meets. Help a brother out. They organise a lot of uh, awesome free meetups all around the world. Um, and so, yeah, please do come and show support and uh, 
Come and say hi at the live show on the 5th of November as well. Sunday, November the 5th. It'll be a really, really good day out. Guarantee that. Uh, any fireworks that day, James? Uh, I mean, it might be um, for Watkins and Salah owners as Villa go to Forest and Liverpool go to Luton. So it'll be very interesting games from a fantasy perspective as well, whatever format you play. Nice one, listeners. Uh, remember, remember the 5th of November. Stay safe. Ciao for now. Live show, live show, live yeah, show. That's live coming, show. that's coming. Live After two hours of setting the mics up, cables, cameras, I have to sit like a fucking (laughs) hunchback. (laughs) So, listen, thanks everybody for turning up to our first ever Planet FPL Live. (laughs) You're gonna do that for an hour.